But I just want to say before we get started, I just uh, congratulations to Coach Tang. What an awesome deal that is for him. You know, my family and I listened to that on the radio uh, while the awards ceremony was going on. And, you know, I felt like I was up for the award. I was kind of nervous when it was going on. And when they said his name, I was legitimately elated for him. And it's awesome uh, him as a representative of K-State. And it was fun taking my family to the Octagon uh, as often as we could this year. We got over there several times, and they never disappointed. It was fun to watch those guys play in the run they had. So I just wanted to say, before we got started, congratulations to him. It's it, it's awesome, you know what? And uh, you know, Coach Tang has been um, active with us. I know he's obviously had his hands full with recruiting, but he's been over to practices. We've seen him. You know, he's been at games. Obviously, he was um, kind of the crowd uh, control guy there for a while, and. Um, just his passion, I think, is is something that uh, helps the whole campus. When it comes to spring ball now, you're pretty comfortable with your scheme. Is it more about player development at this stage or schematic changes, or yeah. do you, are you determining a depth chart? No, we're, we're a little bit of all. Yeah, we're, we're, we're experimenting with a few new things, um, kind of uh, the same process as we did a year ago. We, we tr uh, threw some things against the wall. Uh, maybe not in tremendous detail, uh, and we kind of learned some of the details as we went. Some of it stu was stuff we just didn't think we wanted to work through because it was too taxing mentally, and we just threw it out and didn't even mess with it in the fall. Others were things that we thought at some point in the year we might touch, um, maybe against a certain opponent that gives a certain look. There's a certain thing that we might want to do. We would like to rep that a little bit in the spring, so we're getting some of that stuff out of the way. Um, we're trying to develop depth as best we can. Uh, the Daniel Greens of the world, the Austin Moores of the world, the guys that have played a tremendous amount of football, the Khalid Dukes, the Nate Matlack, some of those guys were not um, taxing as much. You know, we're trying to find those guys that are going to play around them and then try to find the best combination of guys. There's other guys that have played a little bit. Uh, the um, VJ Paynes of the world that we're trying to tax those guys mentally by maybe trying them at a couple of different positions. Um, and uh, seeing what kind of stress load they can handle. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we're going to be excited to get some of the injured guys back with us that aren't participating in the spring. What questions do you think this year's defense you kind of need to answer right now? You know, um, for starters is, um, you know, what what is our depth situation like? You know, we can't run into situations and expect to be successful like we were a year ago at safety where we just, you know, honestly, the – the, the roof caved in a little bit on us. I mean, just with all the injuries that piled up there, and we got to be extraordinarily thin at the end of the year. And hopefully we can get to the point where at every position across the board, we're not running into that. And that's uh, uh, that's the biggest thing that I think we're trying to do right now. And lastly, you kind of touched on them a little bit, but is this the best linebacker room you've had since you've been in Manhattan? Definitely. Definitely. Um, from an experience standpoint, uh, from a uh, knowledge of scheme standpoint, and 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 you know, I dare say, from a leadership standpoint, also. I mean, those guys are just um, incredible. You know, when you talk about the Austin Moores, the Daniel Greens, um, but then you take some of these young guys into the mix too that have just incredible ability. You know, Jake Clifton, um, Toby Asensami, um, and then guys like Des Purnell, who are you know found a, a, a role last year and have gotten so much better and so much more comfortable. Um, you know, and there's a number of other guys in that room that I'm not mentioning, but that that is a, a, a you know really good source of strength for our defense right now. From that, I'll segue into Terry Kirksey. What can he give you, a linebacker? Can he lighten some of the load from Daniel Green? Certainly, yeah, he, he's flashing a little bit more and more. I think day one and two, uh, not unlike a lot of others, he was swimming a little bit, uh, not only at at the volume of installation, but also at the pace with which we practice and the expectations of how we run to the ball and some of that stuff that was a little foreign to him. And I think that, uh, you know, he didn't bat an eye. We kind of got on him a little bit and got him going on some of that stuff. And he's getting better every practice. And he will certainly uh, be a factor in the fall. And you mentioned them mix and match a little bit. At safety, are you less concerned with getting guys in the right spot as much as just getting them acclimated to the system a hundred percent yeah we're trying to find um we're trying to find um i don't know you know if in a three safety deal you'd love to have you'd love you'd love to have nine guys that that you feel comfortable with but you know in actuality there's some guys that probably could dual train and um 
you know, if something were to happen, you could slide people around a little bit. Uh, but right now, I'm 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 really pleased with Colby McAllister. You know, he's a guy that has kind of, uh, you know, we weren't sure what to expect in the spring, and and he's far exceeded expectations. Um, really pleased with uh, Marquis Siegel. You know, as a, as a transfer coming in here, he's going to be a huge huge part of what we're doing. He's been phenomenal. Um, you know, our two our two young kids, Cam Salas and Wesley Fair, as true freshmen, early enrollee seniors, they're going to probably help us next year. Um, you know, just a side note on all these early enrollee kids, you know, those two guys I mentioned, Austin Romaine, uh, linebacker, and Chidi Obiazer as a defensive end. I wouldn't be surprised to see um, any of those guys playing for us in the fall. The only guy that's here uh, that I didn't mention as an early enrollee is Colin Dunn. He hasn't practiced. He's been injured. But uh, those, those other four that are practiced, uh, it's very, very plausible that those guys could uh, see a role in the fall. Me if I'm wrong, in the Big 12 championship game, you took a look at Jacob Parrish for a couple snaps at safety, and then Echo went down right after that. Yeah, he, it was more of a nickel kind of a role, but yeah, I mean, we we used him inside a little bit. We're we're t uh, messing around with that right now and trying some different guys in those spots. Uh, Keenan Garber was another guy that that did that as he moved over from receiver to do that for that. Week, uh, we spent about 36 hours getting him ready to go for the biggest game of his life. Um, but uh, you know, he's a full-time corner now, and he's been extraordinarily impressive. I mean, Keenan Garber is somebody that's flashed, uh, especially those last probably three practices, uh, just with some plays coming out of nowhere. That you know, he has some athleticism that is very, very rare. And uh, the more he gets comfortable in that position, he's going to be a bigger and bigger player in this too. Joe, we've seen uh, Echo and Julius hold down those two starting spots at corner for so long now. Is that still the goal next season, if you can find two guys to do it again, or um, would you rotate more? No, there? I don't see it that way. I think it's going to be more corner by committee. And it's not, a, a, it's not because we don't have two guys that are alphas. I think it's because we've got several guys that are alphas. I think that uh, Will Lee, as a transfer guy, um, is getting more and more comfortable. He'll have a big role in that. Same kind of thing. Will just... Still not quite certain about how we do things, but he is flashing. I mean, he makes flash plays for us. Uh, Jacob Parrish has kind of been steady Eddie. I think um, his biggest deal is he's put on uh, a significant amount of weight. And I think for the first couple practices, he was learning to deal with that. And I think since he started to feel a little bit more comfortable with his body, I'm noticing him more and more out there. Um, Omar Daniels has been you know, a guy that has seen snaps. Um, we're messing around with Omar inside a little bit also. Um, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a number of guys there, Darrell Jones, Jordan Wright, that are, that are all good enough to play in the Big 12. And, you know, it's just on us to find different roles and situations where we can use those guys, whether that's nickel packages, dime packages, things like that, where we can put those guys in and, and they can be cover guys, blitzers, and underneath zone guys. How much will it help uh, both Khalid and the defense to have him more at his original position at DN? He looks really natural <laughs> doing what he's doing right now. Um, he's so explosive. And um, like I said, he's, he's in a little bit of a limited role this, this fall because our, our, our goal is not to stress the guys that have played a lot of ball. It's to stress the guys that haven't yet. But um, Khalid is, um, you know, it's been a long time. I don't have everybody's memory, but, you know, going back to – to 2021, I mean, Khalid is a, is a dangerous, dangerous dude at defensive end. I mean, he's got uh, incredible rush ability. He's got very heavy hands. He's tough. Uh, he gets off blocks really well. I mean, he's going to um, pick up, hopefully, where Felix left off last year. I wanted to ask a little bit more about him. Keenan Garber, does he is he starting to look more like a defender now he, that he's gotten some time to do it? He is. He is. He is. Uh, um, you know, even in, even in the bowl prep and stuff last year, he just body control. He he just didn't look very natural, and I think he looks so much more natural right now in his movements. You know, in his in his backpedal, in his shuffle, in just in a stance. I mean, he just looks more like a DB, exactly like you're saying. I mean, he's just a, um, a more physical player than I remember him being. You know, I've seen him come up and get off some blocks and make some. Uh, some nice tackles on people when we had those situations, and I, I think, um, you know, in in the fall, I think he'll be ready to go at corner for sure. You lost a couple experienced guys at nose tackle. How's that position looking right now? Yeah, I think Uso is going to be uh, uh, a beast. I'm excited about him, um, and uh, uh, you know, Uso's 
thing is not uh, uh, size and strength. I mean, it's Uso's thing is just can we keep him under, you know, 800 pounds? And he's been uh, um, – He's he's he is uh, uh, so quick and so explosive, and I think Coach Tui's done a marvelous job with him because he's gotten away with just being the best player on the field everywhere he's been. And I think you know what Coach Tui is doing with him is is teaching him technique and pad level and hand placement and formation recognition. And I think that he's come a long way in that. Um, the other guy that you know, a couple guys that I'm extraordinarily pleased with there. Javon Banks as a transfer has been a very pleasant surprise. Um, he's, um, you know, he's exactly what we thought he was. I mean, he's quick. He's, he gets off blocks. He's difficult to 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 get movement on. Um, he's smart. He understands things, and you know, he'll be a he'll be a major factor in the fall. And then uh, the other guy that we knew was a good player. Uh, is just kind of coming into his own as he comes into his body a little bit more as Damian Olalio. And, um, you know, Damian uh, might be one of the best technicians we have on the defense. You know, just uh, uh, plays with tremendous pad level, plays extraordinarily hard, is absolutely down for the cause, you know, and, uh, um, you know, he'll have a role too. Is time playing in space help him as a defensive end? You know, uh, difficult, difficult to judge. I think he has a better global understanding of what's going on around him. Uh, for what that's worth and how important it is that, hey, man, if we tell you to spill a block, you know how frustrating it is when the guy doesn't get the thing spilled in front of you. Um, but Khalid's biggest asset is is just cutting him loose. I mean, he's just uh, – I, I don't I don't want to make Khalid a robot. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he is um, – that he has an understanding of that stuff. But I also want Khalid just to be Khalid and use his natural instincts because that's where he's at his, at his best. I know that – against them in practice mm -hmm. um, every day. Just how talented is that group of quarterbacks? Well, Will is, you know, Will is, it's a different deal when Will's in the game because he's just so confident and he's got just such a command of everything. And, um, you know, his jump in a year is incredible. That's why you just hate to say anything about anybody because you never know where they're going to be in the future. And um, he is, he is uh, you know, he's going to be one of the better ones in the Big 12 for sure. Um, Jake Rubley's done some good things. You know, I think that's a, uh, it's a progression, and it's a progression at every spot. It doesn't matter what position you play, but especially at a position where it's really mental. Quarterback obviously is that. I think it's it's it takes time. You can't just snap into a thing. And you know, the way that kids learn nowadays, it doesn't. You just put it on the board and they got it. You know, it doesn't work that way. They've got to see it. They've got to do it. And when the picture changes a little bit, they have to understand what that does to them. And in a position like quarterback, not unlike safety. Or linebacker, you know, where it's you know more reactionary, um, you know, sometimes it takes a couple of years for a guy to get their groove. But I can tell you that he's looked a lot better. And you know, I've, of course, Avery Avery Johnson is is a special special athlete. I, that's all I'm gonna say. I don't know. I can't. You've talked Colin about the rest of it. I just know I see that get running around, and he looks like a streak of lightning. He's he's fun to watch. And kind of a bigger picture question. You guys played some really good teams. TCU obviously made the national championship game. You guys beat them. Alabama was a really good team. When you face teams like that, does it kind of give you a little bit um, is it a little more reaffirming to know that you guys were doing the right things schematically and you're able to beat these kind of teams? Yeah, my, my biggest takeaway from the Alabama game, you know, obviously it was a disappointing outcome for us, um, it was that, you know, we, we obviously didn't – didn't get the job done there, but it wasn't because they were so much better than us, which was what maybe the fear was going into the game. The, we just simply didn't play very well. You know, we just made a lot of, of mistakes. We didn't make plays when we had opportunities. Uh, we didn't tackle very well, and I think some of those things. Um, that was the that was the reason for our demise that that game. It wasn't because my gosh, they got five star players all over the place. NFL got that wasn't. We're not that far off on some of that stuff. So. I came away from that game, although disappointed, I came away from that game realizing that, you know, week to week we can beat anybody and we should. How surprised were you when, when Daniel told you guys that he was coming back? <laughs> um, very, very surprised. You know, uh, we, we uh, kind of coach's policy on that is he doesn't want that to be on the forefront of everybody's, you know, we don't, we don't press guys on that. And, and I, I appreciate that. And I think the players do too. You know, I don't, you know, we're not having, I'm sure there's some schools that have open discussions about that. Um, 
we don't really. You know, we, we, we want the players to concentrate on the season that they're in, and then after the season we'll discuss what the next move is. And so we had never really had a tremendous dialogue with him about it, but every kind of hint that he had had um, was, hey, I'm going to, you know, see what happens at the next level. I've done what I'm going to do here. And, um, you know, so it, it was totally unexpected. Um, and uh, but when it, when it came out, I, I mean, I got to tell you, that was – I think me and my wife went out to dinner that night. Uh, celebration. It's a joke. But uh, it was big time. It was, it was awesome. It was, it was incredibly unexpected. But it was um, – it's such, he's such a leader for us and such a difference maker and such a vocal guy and a presence in the locker room and – um, I mean, just the face of the program. He's 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 outstanding. And then with all, <clears throat> excuse me, with all these newer faces coming in, even, even guys that came in last year, to have him as kind of the rock, along with Austin Moore. Yeah. I mean, have both of those guys to kind of carry that over. How how big is that? Yeah, it's it's so incredible for a guy like Terry Kirksey, Gavin Forche. Um, you know, you could go on and on. Jake Clifton, Toby. You know, the guys that that are that are um, like you said, first or second year in the program. That that. Forget about what he does on the field, but how the guy takes care of his body, how he manages his time, what he eats, you know, how he interacts with coaches, you know, how he spends his day. Um, everything about that guy is how you'd want to model yourself. Can you discuss the, <clears throat> maybe the evolution of Daniel Green since you arrived from not just as a player, but as a leader and a person. Yeah. So, you know, my, my early memories of Daniel were I thought he was, a, he was like a cannonball. You know, in a straight line, he would just knock you out. But, it, you know, if you just step to the side, he might might miss you. Um, and I don't know how, you know, football smart he was. I think he kind of understood stuff, um, but he worked at it. It didn't. It wasn't like a supernatural thing to him. And I'm going back now to 2019. Um, and then as the position became his more and more, um, I think he started to realize that, hey, everybody is looking at me. You know, um, I don't know if he felt that way in 2019, you know, 2020 when he was when he was still um, the young guy, you know, the, the backup guy. And, and I think when he became the guy and then he realized he goes out there every Saturday, he's making a bunch of plays and he's having some fun and it's happening like he thought it would happen for him. Um, you know, I, his confidence just went through the roof. And when that started to happen, he started to apply himself in other areas taking care of his body, weight room, you know, uh, change of direction, nutrition, all the, you know, all the little things that we preach on a daily basis. He's doing those things. He's not talking about those things. And that's why it's so great to have him around those young guys. So, I, I, you know, we've seen it right before our eyes. I mean, he's as good of a personification of that as anybody we've ever had of a guy that just, you know, kind of toe dipped into the program a little bit. And I don't mean to say that to offend him, but that, you know, he, he didn't come on campus and was the guy right away. He, he has become the guy through his work, through what he's done on the field, and that's why I'm so proud of him. It's, it's clear you guys are recruiting much better and you're more effective in that department. Is it because of the recent accomplishments and how much you've won or more of you know what you're selling because you've been at Kansas State long enough that you can kind of talk to the recruits more openly about it? You know, I, I think we attract um, we attract people that are right for us. You know, um, I don't know that we care that much about what people think about the people we're recruiting. I think what we care about is do these people fit in our locker room and will they be willing to be developed? Um, sometimes you run into guys that are that are just, you know, they're all about recruiting. And those are the guys we're trying to avoid like the plague. You know, they want to get – they want to – most important part of the visit for them is the photo shoot because they want to get down there and they want to get on some wristbands and play music and – if that if those aren't the kind of guys that we're trying to attract, you know we're trying to attract the guys that want to come in here and talk ball, and they want to come in here and and um, see what your day to day is like, and you know you can tell by the look in their eye that they're about business, and I think our recruiting is better because we're attracting those kind of people, and the reputation is starting to come out that we're re recruiting those kind of people. In 2019, I don't know that people knew what we were about. You know, further on defense, I can say that. We know what we want now. You know, 2019, 2020, we were still recruiting to four down stuff. Even 2021, you know, uh, in these last couple of years, we're realizing what, you know, what type of nose tackles have success in our, in our system. 
You know, what type of safeties have success in our system? You know, what characteristics do you have to have to be a good linebacker for us? And as we understand that more and more because of the, the examples that we're seeing, we're starting to find those people in, in recruiting in, in, in some small corners, and, and we're attracting them here. Was that Sam Backer shaping up and the will behind Austin Moore? A uh, lot of competition there. You know, we're, we're again, trying to shift guys around and try to, uh, trying to be as um, – put as much stress on guys as we possibly can to see who can handle it. Because, you know, you think about – you know, we were talking about this yesterday as a staff. You know, we think of backups – Backups are really one snap away from being the guy, you know, so it's not like you can have a guy that you can probably get away with for 15 snaps. Sure, that might be the plan, but all of a sudden something happens to somebody and now he's playing every snap of every game. And so we're trying some different guys there. Um, uh, at Sam right now, we've got a heck of a battle going on between Des Purnell, who's been um, sensational, Jake Clifton, who's been sensational, who we've tried around at a bunch of different spots. And so he's kind of starting to get into that um, fight a little bit. And Toby Asensami, who is um, start, just just starting, and he's going to be a phenomenal player, uh, and we'll find a role for him. He's just so incredibly athletic, uh, and the game's coming to him a little bit. You know, over at Will right now, uh, you know, Gavin Forche is much more comfortable than he was a year ago, played a little bit for us. And then Rex Van Wy, the other transfer that we brought in from Iowa Central, is still um, uh, developing with his body, but he's an extremely intelligent football player. I mean, he'll be a good player here. He's just, uh, you know, he's a young guy. I mean, he's, he's the same. He's a second-year guy in college that just happened to go to a junior college out of, out of high school. And so he's, you know, people think of junior college guys as experienced old guys. He's not. He's 19. You know, so it's uh, – that's a – those are still ongoing battles, you know. And now that the installation is fully in – we can really figure out who can who can play football. You know, for a while there was just who can keep their head above water through the installation, and now it's all right. Who can get off blocks? Who can make tackles? Who can you know run to the ball? Now we can now we can make an educated guess as to who will be the guy in the fall. You know the numbers from last year, and you remember the plays and just how exciting all that was. And now you're kind of you're not starting over. You got some key guys back but you're kind of on the ground floor, so to speak, but you also have the same defense. How exciting do you feel like this defense could be this year? I think we have, uh, um, you know, and obviously there's some, there's some big time playmakers when you talk about Julius Brents and, and Felix, and, um, but I think we have a lot of really good playmakers right now too. Uh, just maybe guys that you don't know their names yet. Um, and I think that's what's, that's what's uh, really exciting. I don't think we've seen the best of Nate Matlack. You know, I don't. Um, you know, I don't think we've seen the best of Khalid Duke. You know, I, I don't think we've seen the best of of Uso. You know, I, I think there are some guys that are going to by mid October be guys that people are going to be like, "Whoa, that kid's pretty good." You know, and um, that remains to be seen. Though, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. Every every year is new. Every team is different. Um, you can get frustrated every time that you know we see some uh, Big Twelve champion thing, or you know, go pick up some. Big 12 championship merchandise at the, you know, that we're trying to preach to our guys, that's over. You know, you guys are 0 and 0, just like everybody else is. And, and we're going to have to, um, and nobody going to hand you anything. In fact, it's going to be a more difficult road this year than it was last year because we're, we're on target now. So, um, you know, we're, we're just, you know, back to the point of what we're trying to develop in spring. We're trying to develop toughness and we're trying to develop kind of a, a mentality that none of that stuff matters. We're just blocking things out and trying to play ball plays. Joe, what do you think will make Julius Brents a good NFL corner? You know, those guys aren't – they don't grow on trees, those six, three-and-a-half guys that can run like that and are physical um, and are, are smart and willing to learn. Um, you know, I, I was so proud of what he did at the Combine and, you know, it was, it was unfortunate that he wasn't able to do some things at his pro day because I think he probably could have ran a little bit better uh, than he did uh, um, in Indianapolis. But, um, you know, he is – He'll play a lot of years in the NFL because he, he, he loves football. He loves to work. He's not afraid to come in and do extra. He always did extra. Uh, just a phenomenal individual. Can't wait to see where he ends up here in a couple months.